that started off, I think I was just looking at one of those bike racks that we have. What trick would I want to do through that? And I was like, I think a fakie flip would be quite a hard one. Then I set about trying to find a bike rack. I was kind of sat just looking at one. There was a bike locked up to it. Obviously, that's going to be a problem as well. And I was like, hang on a minute. Just do it through the bike. That's so much cooler in my eyes. <laughs> so it was, who's got a big enough bike? Went to Lloyd's. My friend had a bike there. The bike was too high. So I was like, I've got to get my own bike. Someone posted on my street WhatsApp group saying, found this bike in the middle of the road. They were going to keep it. And if somebody claimed it, obviously they'd have their bike back. I messaged them asking if, if you don't get the bike back, then would it be okay for me to have it for a, an art project? <laughs> A few weeks later, they were like, you can have the bike. Took that down to Lloyd's, started trying it, and the frame was just too small. So then I was onto, onto Gumtree. I found a bike. There's a pink bike. It was a big pink bike. Started trying it through that. It was still too high, so what I did was I bent the wheels. It looked pretty cool. That made a huge difference. It was like, okay, the board's coming through, you know, once every 20 goes or something. All that goes where it doesn't go through, the bike falls over, and that is the most frustrating thing bike back up make sure the stand is intact make sure it's you know straight up again but we got one step closer and it looked cool like i said it was like these dali melting clocks and the amount of people that would just take photos of it because they thought it was an art installation or something it attracted a lot of interest from non-skaters that didn't even know we were i suppose i wasn't lying to my neighbor because it was it turned into an art project you know even if you weren't skating it it kind of just looked sick but that was too small, so I had to find a bigger one. And the biggest one I could find was a three-hour drive from my house. This one looked cool as well, so it was about three hours from my house. So yeah, that one ended up getting delivered. Really heavy thing. For this bike, I didn't end up bending the wheels. I ended up just taking off the back wheel, which also gave the kind of impression that it was sinking into the ground, which again attracted a lot of attention. Looked like a, yeah, it looked like it was melting into the ground um, from some angles. That was the final bike. So it was four bikes in total. Bearing in mind, this is about nine sessions in. Phil Parker was filming this, and we'd both gone completely mad by this point. I managed to stop it from falling over. Oh, because the back wheel wasn't attached. So it was stable enough where you could hit into it and it wouldn't fall over. I've gone completely crazy trying this. I don't even know if I can do it. And Phil's, Phil's so invested in it. He was like, you've got it. He kept sending me the footage saying, like, look how close you are. I, I kind of worked the technique out and it was just... Imagine the bike's not there. Don't worry about your feet clipping this metal object. Basically just had to do a slow fakie flip, level it out early, and then let the board travel through. Just assume it's gonna be there. Bear was trying a trick, Bear Miles, um, and he did a slappy tail slide, and then it was kinda, of, everything just went quiet. I'd already set off like rolling, and it kind of just felt like everyone knew it was gonna happen then. So my friend Arthur happened to be filming, and he just pans from Bear straight to the bike. And boom, that was the one straight through. That was the biggest relief in skateboarding I've ever had for sure.